But the truth of the matter is that um, uh, if you compare the population of Europe with the U.S., which is about the same, Europe, maybe 400 million uh, people, I don't know exactly the latest figures, but it's usually Europe is four or 500 million, U.S. is 300, 350, depending on how many tourists we have here. But when you compare the cases in Europe with the U.S., Europe is like way out there compared to the U.S. I mean, Europe has, I, I look at this number, and this morning was like, uh, and again, this changes by the hour, but Europe has about 23,000 cases, confirmed cases, and um, more than 1,000 deaths. Whereas the U.S., again, confirmed cases. I think cases, they have more deaths than that, right? Uh, well, Italy, 827. Is, okay, maybe. It's, yeah, okay. so Europe in general has 23,000 confirmed cases. Again, this is as of this morning. And then about over 1,000 deaths. Whereas the, the U.S., being similar size as far as population, has um, about um, 1,300 cases now, or 13 something, and then uh, so far 38 deaths, which obviously is, is much, much less than, than in Europe. So uh, shutting the borders basically will help because we're going to prevent all these people that come with a higher um, risk from Europe to, uh, to, to bring the... the coronavirus to the U.S. And in effect, that's what China did, even though they did it late too. And, and they didn't tell the rest of the world when they realized the, the grave, the, how grave it was the, uh, or the situation that they had in place. They basically shut down the country. They shut down the regions first. And then thanks to that, China seems to be now over the curve as far as cases and deaths and everything else, if what we know is true. So obviously quarantining the country, forget about individuals, but quarantining the country seems to work as far as limiting the spread of the virus and then controlling it and then seeing how things are progressing. So um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's been crazy. In addition to that, we have other um, sports news and everything else that happened um, last night. Yeah, I mean, it was kind of crazy within the span of like 20 minutes. You know, it's funny because, not funny, but no one cares until someone they know gets it. That's kind of what happens with a lot of these things. No one cares unless it directly affects them or someone they know. And I was saying that, you know, just wait until someone famous gets it because then it's going to be a shock and people are going to be like, oh, wow. You know, and I, I was saying this weeks ago, I said, just wait, because someone famous is going to get it and then people are going to pay attention. And then last night, within a span of 20 minutes, it was Trump's speech bans all travel from Europe. Literally a few minutes later, Tom Hanks announces that he and his wife have it. And it wasn't in this case, it wasn't just someone famous. It wasn't like a B-lister. It was literally one of the most famous people in the world, mm -hmm. Tom Hanks. And then... I don't know, 10 minutes later, the NBA announced that Rudy Gobert. That was the most bizarre thing. And I'm not a big NBA fan. I mean, I follow the NBA, but I'm not a hardcore fan like you are. But that was the most bizarre live event situation that I've seen as yeah. far as canceling a game and suspending the league. Live, yeah, I mean, they, live on TV, pretty much. Because you have to think, well, basically, you know, Rudy Gobert got it. NBA who player, plays for? Who plays for the Utah Jazz. Mm -hmm. And uh, immediately, there's actually footage if you look, this it was kind of going around the clip of the pregame show. You see this doctor running behind the pregame host, like sprinting. Right, I mean the refs they were, were about to start. They the were game. ready to. They already had introduced the players. Right, they were ready to get for tip off, basically. Right, and so basically he got it. Then this morning it was announced that the basically the two best players on the Jazz both have it: uh, Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert. And the NBA just but it was last night shut down. I mean last night. The, the reaction was so... I mean, there were places... Because they already had a meeting. There were different games taking place. They already had a meeting in, uh, earlier in the day where they were considering suspending games for a few weeks or playing without attendees. Mm -hmm. And the Warriors had already announced that they were going to play without attendees. And then the NBA was considering it too. And then once one of the players got it, they basically said, we're done. Because think about how fast... Because now they, have, they said that over 60 players have come in contact in the last week with him. Mm -hmm. So they're testing all of them. I mean, think of how fast Journalist, it spreads everybody. the league. Because yeah. if you get... You play one team one night. That team goes plays another team. You play another team. That those two teams now have it. They play. You know that's how and quickly the, and it the rate of um, um, spread of the well, that's one of the things with the coronavirus is is an exponential 
uh, uh, spread basically. I mean, each person can can, can yeah, it's infect. It's incredibly maybe, contagious, right? It can infect maybe two, or three that are in contact with, and those two, or three can't, you know, infect right. another two, or three. So, right. so the, the rate of spread is huge. So, I think the NBA made the right call, and it was funny because we we're watching actually a different game that was well, taking place. It was you know, I, I turned on the uh, Denver Dallas game that was on mm-hmm. ESPN just because I was like, because they literally, I'm on Twitter and they announced it. I was like, there's a game right now. And then they showed like Mark Cuban's live Get reaction, and the commentators are like, "Like, okay, I guess this is the last game for a while." But and to, the, the the contrast to me is that both of these, we saw that game, and there was another one later. Who but that the, one got canceled. Oh, that one did get canceled. Yes. The later one. They found okay. out. You know why? Because they found out that one of the referees in the game had refereed the Utah game uh, oh, two nights ago. Okay, so I didn't see it. that. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, so the game was taking place when you see Mark Cuban. He was obviously in Dallas, and he's looking at his phone, and he obviously was reading the information, saying, and you see his reaction. Yeah. And then he actually had a couple of uh, impromptu live interviews with the uh, with Doris Burke, I think, and somebody else, oh, and. and um, was the um, name is Dave Pash? I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't um, know who was commenting. I know Doris Berg. I don't know who was with her. But right. So, thanks. anyways, he had a couple of live interviews and then another one post game interview. But the game game went on, and and the stadium or the court was packed, obviously in in Dallas, and. Uh, but yeah, I mean, to me, you and I were talking about like we already had enough knowledge of the virus to know that when when the NCAA, by the way, um, also um, said that their games were going to be played without spectators. Yeah, and the uh, NHL just, today canceled their season. Right, too. that was before yesterday. So, so in in other words, we already know that crowded situations are basically a set full of possibilities for the germs or the virus to to spread. So I'm surprised that people even go to the games, to be honest, because you are surrounded by people that are right. Yeah, the, the excuse you. of, oh, it wasn't canceled, I'm still going to go, I think is absolutely ridiculous. It's right. You need to take your own life into your responsibility. You can't rely on the federal government or state authorities to tell you how to act. And, and you it need probably, to act. And it, probably, it, it really proves that, honestly, I don't think most of the government agencies were ready for this no, type of no. rapid I've been saying it for weeks. Rapid pandemic. It feels like everybody's at, acting in slow motion. Meanwhile, this is going but, at double speed. Yes, but at the same time, I mean, if you're a citizen of any civilized country, you expect your agencies, whether they are Department of I Health don't. or whatever. Well, yeah, you don't because you already are because, more skeptical. But because, when you I mean, when you have elected officials and agencies and everything, you expect them to do their job just like you do at your corporate level. Okay, you work in a company and you expect your boss to know what to do and the person that you have, the vice president of this or that to make adjustments and reactions and everything else. And if we have elected officials that are not reacting the right way or the proper way as far as timeliness and everything else, that's critical for these situations. So everybody can have smooth no selling when the selling is shit. smooth. But that's what I'm saying. I mean, even the who, which the who's whole job, the whole reason the who exists is for situations like this, for pandemics. And uh, just a month ago, the head of the who was saying, business as usual, this is not a big deal, don't change your life, uh, no need to hurt the economy. This is the head of the who. This is his fucking job. This is his only fucking job, is to be a leader in a time of crisis, and he completely failed. Yeah, the CDC but that's, completely failed. Well, but that's the, the same. FDA I, I, completely I, I completely agree that all this, all this um, organisms because like the, the who, bureaucracies, the United Nations, and all that stuff. And I don't trust them. I understand it. But you at least hope that your own country's agencies will do their job. I think the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention forgot about the last two parts, control and prevention, because when you think about it, they are not controlling and not preventing. They've been basically patching and reacting, which is, yeah, I can react too, but it'll be nice to know in the ahead fact of time that what could happen. that we still don't have widespread testing is absolutely ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's an absolute failure on the CDC. You know, we were talking actually the other day.